Here are the new and improved FlashCat clip adapters for the Embedded Computers FlashCat USB Mach 1 and Export 2.0. All the adapters use either the TSOP48 or TSOP56 universal clips for accessing flash memory and circuit. Each adapter has been tuned to improve signal integrity and reliability to operate at the higher speeds supported by the Mach 1. In order to properly support the Mach 1 and Export 2.0, I also made a new dual voltage power supply. No more jumpers or switches, the new power supply is completely automatic sets the appropriate VCC and I.O. voltages, and turns on and off based on input from the flash cat. It can also be used as a standalone power supply. Just use the buttons to change the output voltage from 1 volt to 5 volts. The power supply uses a USB Type-C connector in order to provide up to 3 amps when used with a USB power delivery compliant source. It can work with a standard USB to Type-C cable, but only up to 2 amps. All the clip adapters are available at my website, zygren.com and the FlashCat USB Mach 1 and Export 2.0 are available from embeddedcomputers.net. I know some of you will be asking why there are no 360 clip or E3 adapters. The 360 clip doesn't have enough pins to have 100% compatibility with the Mach 1 or Export 2.0, and the E3 clip was simply not popular enough to keep supporting. Now I'll go ahead and show an example of using the NAND and power supply adapters and circuit. Alright, so I have everything hooked up. Already for the most part, uh, the power supply is connected to the motherboard, which is connected to the NAND adapter, obviously connected to the clip. So I was plugging the power supply first. As you see, it has 5 volt on the input, and then plug in the flash cat. which is now set the output to 3.2. Um, and then you can use the buttons to change that up or down. And when you use the buttons, it'll stop being in auto mode. So then you only have to use the buttons. Uh, the flash cat pulses the power before trying to read, which sometimes can uh, be a problem. So if it is, you can do that once it sets the voltage. And then just put your clip on. And refresh. And there we go. I had to try a couple times to find the sweet spot, but there we go. And then I can just read it in. And <clears throat> with this size one, it takes like 40 seconds or something to read it. So it's easy enough that I can just hold my thumb there and whatever. So yeah, that's pretty much it.